Let's worship him. Hallelujah. I want to worship him in prayer at this time. Hallelujah. We place you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most righteous and heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And we gather here, Father God, to place you hallelujah, the highest place. Hallelujah. Have we come together? Hallelujah. To worship and to lift you up. You are the most high. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are the king of kings and Lord of lords. You are. Hallelujah. We place you at the highest place. Hallelujah. As the son said, God, you are our great high priest. Yes, you are. You are the high priest of the world. Although many do not realize that, don't know that, they refuse to accept that, but you are still God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the world is trying to worship you, yes or no. You are God. You are still God. That's why we place you at the highest place. And we gather here to lift up you, to magnify you, to worship you, the true and living God. Father, I want to thank you for what you move your spirit in this place. Father, as your spirit move up uh, along this congregation, congregation, as we gather to worship you, as we sing song in your name, to your glory. Hallelujah. Father, we ask to accept our worship. Father God, let us accept our worship, Father God, as we worship you in spirit. And in you, Father God, Father God, as we bow down to you, and Father God, we will always honor you, we always lift you up, Father God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who marched all the way to Calvary to lay down his life for us, to shed his precious blood that we may be saved, for all who believe in him. As the scripture said, the Bible said, no one, and the songs, no one, Take his life, but he laid down. He laid down for us. Hallelujah. Oh, Father. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But he loved us so much. And for that, Father, for that we will place Jesus. We will place him at the highest place. Hallelujah. This is not just a, a routine. But it's a worshiping in spirit and in truth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Her blood of shed yes. for us allowed to God, that we can be here. Thank Jesus. Blood of shed that we can be worshiping. Yes, Lord. Blood of shed for our, for our freedom. Yes, Lord. Blood of shed for our sin. Yes, Hallelujah. And we must remember each and every day of our life that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. He is our Lord and Savior. And if He is not your Lord and Savior, you need to come see a man. Glory to God. A man that can tell all about your problem, all about your, your sin, all about your disease. All about what you have done and what you're going to do. You need to accept that man as the Lord and Savior. Father, I ask you to move it in this church. Move it in our worship. Hallelujah. Touch you about to bring the, the message today, Lord. Father, so that when he, he or she worship you, we will see Jesus. We will see the Lord. Yes, Not the person, but the Lord. Yes, Whatever this person may bring to us, make it be of you and not of itself. Yes, Father, God, like, touch the priest, see my they sing Sunday after Sunday, glory to your name. Bless everything that we do, and we do it in your name. Father, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you
the works of man. You are the most high God. There is none like you. Thank you.
chapter 3, reading from verses 1 through 10. should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us now, because it knew him now. And every man hath had this hope in him purified himself. Even as he is pure. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. 
And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, yes, and in him is no sin. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Ten together, and this children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither is he that loveth not his father. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the Son. Thank you for the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. We have ended this portion of God's holy word and we have honored by saying, Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be. Okay, it's time for the offering and don't be giving when we call and up the dead or how dead. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I feel good to be here on Hallelujah. We are still worshiping. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time for tithes and offering. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me look if I see any sour face though. They should be very cheerful and smiling. Amen. Because it's giving time. Amen. Amen. Well, let us want you to turn the Bible quickly to Leviticus 27 and 30. And we're going to read that verse together. Leviticus 27 and verse 30. We are going to read that together. Because he's telling us something. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what we're talking about. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Let's begin verse 30. Together. And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Amen. The seeds of the land, the fruit of the land, the money from our work, the shoes on our feet, the clothes on our back, the car we drive, whatever we have, belongs to the Lord. Belongs to the Lord. Right, Let me hear amen if you believe that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we should not have a summer face when it's time for Afrin and Tithes. Amen? amen? We should give cheerfully. The Bible tells us when we give, it will come back to us, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So let us believe that. Amen? So as you get your tithes and offering ready, we are going to bless it. Because he said you believe for what you don't receive. And you will receive it. Amen? So, Father, we thank you this day for your grace and for your mercies. We thank you for your goodness towards us. 
Father, we thank you for life everlasting. Mighty God, we thank you for health and for strength. Yes, sir. For food, for shelter, for oh, raiment. Yes, we thank you for family members. We thank you, O oh God, that you are God and God alone. And all you, Lord, are to be praised. You are glorious and you are wonderful. And O oh God, as we come at this time to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with, mighty God, let our heart be cheerful. Let our mind be rest upon you, Lord. Knowing that you give us the strength to go out and work. And we are giving back a portion to you. Bless every hand that will stretch forth, O oh God. Bless those who do not have but to stretch. And we pray, Father, that you will provide for them so that they can be a blessing unto you. Hear my prayer this now. As we ask it in no other name but our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And you on social media are invited to participate with us also. On the screen you will see where you can three ways you can have your tithes and uh, offerings come to us. Amen. You have the snail mail which is the PO box <laughs> and you have the email which is the cell and I think it's what catch up. Yes. Yes. Right. So participate with us. Whether you're watching now or you're watching later on, yes, sir. please participate with us. Amen. And you can start from the back. Um, uh, pressing, please give me a live chorus. And you can come with your tithes on our friend. Yes, sir. Amen. I lit them on in my lamp, keep it burning. I lit them on in my lamp. I pray. Welcome everyone in the house of the Lord. 
Just want to welcome those who are visiting with us. I have some cards here. Sabrina Johnson in the house. Amen. Stand with us, give you a welcome. Walmart, you're welcome. You're welcome. Praise ministries. It's good to have you. I believe you're a friend of your own. Amen. Good. And my sister, amen. You're raising your hand. What's your name? Vera McGann. Vera McGann. I have your name here. Welcome in the house of the Lord. I feel welcome you. You're here on your own. Who welcomed you? Pastor Wilson. Is it? Who invited you? Go burn. Okay, wonderful. Amen. Go back into the house of the Lord. So good to have you back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And all, everyone that in your respectful places, I see it. This is uh, Tashana in the house. I want to welcome her. So, shout out to Tashana. This morning. Praise God. On behalf of my wife and the leaders of the Word of Faith and Praise Ministries, we welcome everyone back into the house of the Lord. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have with us one more time a friend of the ministry, uh, his own rights. Uh, Pastor Seaton Wilson is here with his wife. Give them a hand. Amen. Praise God. Bless the name of the Lord. Um, he's out of St. Croix for those on the social media platform. We just uh, want to recognize the man of God that is with us. Amen. Amen. He's no stranger to this ministry, a friend of my the late Bishop Sidney Edwards, my father. Amen. And uh, we have kept in contact and kept the relationship going. Amen. And uh, so he's here with us again to bring forth the word for the hour. And we want to uh, acknowledge the God that's in him. He's an author, a speaker, and a pastor. Um, pastors in the St. Croix era in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And he's author of two books, and we want you to support them. He has one, Sewer Like an Eagle, Reign Like a King, and the second, Reign in Your Domain. If you haven't got a copy as yet, I implore you to pick up one. Amen. One twenty dollars worth of eight dollars and fifteen worth of eight dollars, and you can have one to read as you study the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, just so why don't you stand on your feet at this time as we welcome the man of God to the platform? Praise the name of the Lord, Pastor C. Wilson. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Yes. Amen. See that. Amen. The, um, Moses wrote in one of his books, Who is like unto him? Who is like unto him? O oh Lord among gods, glorious in holiness, fearful and dreadful in praises, who is like unto him? It's good for my wife and I to be back again with you to share in this fellowship. This is home away from home. Amen. And we enjoy being around you. Bridget, it is great. It is great. It's wonderful. God is great. God is good. And God is always looking for us. You want to say anything? Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. The devil is a liar. He didn't want me to come today. Because I got up and was okay. And then all of a sudden I ate. And then all of a sudden I was having diarrhea. Oh my Lord, my Lord. Pastor Edwards, God delay you this morning. So don't feel any way coming late for us because I told my husband that well if Pastor Edwards don't come in time well and everything go well I'll be able to go to church but if he comes now I couldn't go at that time but my God is a good God I'm here to give him glory the devil can't stop you 
if you will decide say you will not go because trust me sometimes we feel like we just oh, I just want me to stay home that's how when I felt this morning I, I even said I had on my clothes and I said I have to go back in the suitcase huh? I'm all stressed because I don't think I've come but thank God I always enjoy coming to this church. I've been to a lot of churches, but trust me, this is my home from church. And I'm saying it publicly, without a shame or disgrace. This is my home church from home. And I want you, I'm gonna say to you guys, stick close to God. The relationship you have with God in this time will determine your future time. Because if you wobble and double, you will never reach anywhere with God. So get serious. Get focused and let God move in your life so that others will want what you have. But trust me, when you pray and double and do what you want to do, the people see that, that is, that is Christianity, I don't want it. But when they see your life change, and especially when you're going through things, stressful things and they know, and you are dancing and rejoicing, they want that. So bless the Lord at all times. Regardless of what is in your life, regardless of what comes your way. Let the devil know that you're a powerhouse for God and you will stand for righteousness and you will do what God wants you to do. I love the Lord because he first loved me. You know, when Jean was in the world dancing, yes, and I used to love movies and I still love movies and go to parties. But God changed my life. I party with God and with a fellowship enough with the brethren. It is good. It's nice seeing you again. And I'm okay. I did a colonoscopy and they take out some things, they test it and they said, you're all right. So God is good. God is good. God is good. God is so good. And those who don't know him as your personal savior, this is the time. This is the time for him. Let you to let you know that once you give your life to Jesus, trust me, every I'm not everything going to be a better rose. You don't be lying. Because you said through your trials, you become stronger and stronger every day. So trust God. Give God your own and let him be your guide. May God bless you. Keep her in front of you. And I give you God the praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said the Bible is to 1 John, chapter 3, that was read. I'm, I will be focusing in verse 1 to 3. My message is based on hope today. 1 okay. John, chapter 3, 1 to 3. And the topic is incomparable hope. Incomparable hope. Let us pray. Father, I glorify you for the hope you have given to us. We live in a world of hopeless people. The broad world leads to hopelessness, despair, destruction. But you have given us hope in Jesus Christ. Anoint me mightily today and anoint your people, those in the sanctuary, those on social media. Let the world go forth like a dynamis, a nuclear bomb exploded. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The world is full of hopelessness today. Even billionaires are having problem. Hopelessness. Yeah. People running business, people in high position are in fear of their life, fear of their money. 
the richest man in the world up to the end of last year. He has broken world record in a negative sense based on the Guinness Book of Records. He is the first man since wealth has been calculated daily or weekly. He has lost over $200 billion over the past six months. So we can't even put our hope and trust in riches. No matter how much we have, our health, we don't know what's going to happen. Our life relationship, our marriages, our children, we don't know what is going to happen. But we can say like the hymn writer, those of us who know Christ, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. And his righteousness. Yes, sir. We should not be afraid of confessing our hope in Christ. No, sir. For Christ says, Those who are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of them before the angels and before his father. The hope that we have, says Paul in Romans chapter 5, makes us not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Where there is love, there is faith, and there is hope. These are triplet characteristics in the Christian life. Love, hope, faith. They go together. They are so strong that Paul declares in 1 Corinthians 13 30. That a lot of things are going to pass away. Even partial knowledge will pass away and be replaced by full knowledge. But he says, No abides. Faith, hope, and love. These three, they will never disappear. They will never change. Love. Hope, faith will never change. Okay. They will exist even in eternity yes, sir. when we enter there. Amen. So hope is essential to life on planet Earth and in the world to come. We need both hope naturally and spiritually. Mm. You are seated right here, right now. You have a firm hope that is not going to collapse and drop downstairs and die. That's hope. Mm -hmm. You have a firm hope, but that hope is natural. Mm -hmm. Beyond the natural world, we need a hope that when we disappear from this earth, yes, we are going somewhere. Yes, they are educated, rich, influential men and women today. Don't believe that life goes beyond this world. There are those who believe what we call metempsychosis, rebirth, reincarnation, where you die, you can come back as a cat or a cow or a fowl or a rabbit or whatever it is. But we have a hope that makes sense. We have a hope that we can rest in. It's a hope that is the anchor of the soul in a world of suffering, trouble, pain, and despair. I want to challenge you today by saying let eternal hope control your heart and mind for as long as you live. Let us consider the eternal hope. In 1 John 3, 1 to 3. First, eternal hope is offered to humans in the now. Our hope is not something we will get in the future. It is something that starts in the now. Here and now, 
with all the trials and pain and suffering and uncertainties that are going on. We can have hope yes, sir. right now yes, sir. in the midst of despair. Yes. We look at the possibility of eliminating the human race. Nuclear bomb has made it possible to destroy every living creature on the planet. If any of these powers that has nuclear bombs should explode any of those devastating, catastrophic instruments. The entire planet could be wiped out. But it will not be. And it cannot be. Because Christ is coming back for a church. He's coming back for a people. And he says not one shot of his word can pass away. He said heaven and earth may pass away, but not even that Amen. in the Hebrew and Greek language can pass away from the Bible. Amen. And if he's coming back for our people, it doesn't matter what dangerous war, fear that develops around the world. No matter what threat comes from Putin or the, the President of the United States or North Korea or any of these powers with nuclear weapons, they cannot destroy planet Earth because Christians are on it. Yeah. And God has promised that he will take care of his own yeah. and that he's coming back for a people. There will be people on earth yes, sir. He holds the power of the universe. He is the cosmic ruler of the universe. So therefore, when he speaks in New Testament words, it doesn't matter what finite man may say. And all the words that they will publish and all the threats that they will make. The sovereign God will not permit certain things to happen. Because it does not fit into his eternal plan. Yes, yes. He is the cosmic ruler. Eternal hope is offered to humans in the now. Those who accept Christ as Savior have hope now. Paul says in Colossians that Christ in me now is the hope of glory. It's not just an ordinary hope. It's a hope that comes with glorification, splendor. It's a hope that is steadfast and sure is a hope that is immutable. Huh? It cannot change yeah. because Christ is our hope. Yes, Christ is the same Lord. yesterday, Say today, Say and forever. So if Christ in us is the hope oh. and it changes not, yeah. our hope is immutable. What a hope to put our faith in. Amen. What a hope to place our present in. What a hope to place our future in. Is a hope that cannot change. Because it is Christ himself. The unchangeable God. Who is our hope. Amen. Any force that rises up. To destroy God's purpose, that is being and hope, must be destroyed. God tolerates a lot of things and pleasure because he's going to use it for good. He works all things. Look at the hope, friends. The hope that we have says God works everything and all things in, syn in synergy. He works them together. For the good of those who love him. For those who are called according to what? His purpose. Hope, his base, and God's purpose that is centered in Christ. To destroy the hope of Christians requires that you destroy Christ. And who is it? Paul tried it. 
Look what happened to him at Damascus Road. God just gave him a slight glimpse of who he is. And the man was destroying the church, he thinks, I thought. He was knocked down blind on Damascus Road by just a little bit of the manifestation of the power of the risen Christ. Those who have not accepted Christ can now have this hope by putting their faith and trust in God. The jailer was going to shoot himself with his sword or whatever it is. But Paul stopped him. Yeah. And he asked, Brethren, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to have hope? Paul said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Then your hope begins. Everyone in this church or online who is not saved has the grace of God available to them to believe in the world and be saved. The second fact we see, God has poured out eternal hope in those who accept Christ as Lord and Savior. You see, the text says we are looking for a Christ to appear. The blessed hope and the great appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, which is future. When we are saved, the love of God is poured out in our hearts to give us the confidence and the assurance that what God says is going to come true. Amen. Eternal hope is poured out in our hearts the day, the moment we have said Jesus Christ. This hope takes our heart and our minds of the present realm and look at the eternal realm. And the glorious thing is that the so-called concept that you hear that when you are heavenly minded, you are no earthly good. It's a nonsensical term. Put it simply as that. The more heavenly minded you are, is the more earthly good you are. So the heavenly mindedness which makes people no earthly good has nothing to do with Christianity. It has to do with some mythological beliefs which has nothing to do with Christ and the Bible. He has put a hope in our hearts. And that makes us sons and daughters of God in the now. You see, the hope that we have gives us Relationship with the divine. Okay. If you are a child of the God of the universe, and he is the all-powerful ruler, and he loves you with an everlasting love, who can destroy you? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's all. The hope that there is no creature that can annul the hope that God has given to his children. My Lord. It cannot be annulled yes. because the hope is eternal. Amen. Because Christ is eternal yes. and Christ in us is the hope of glory. Yes. It means therefore that this hope we have in Christ is grounded in our relationship with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. The first thing we see, people who have not accepted Christ as Savior and Lord do not know the hope we have in Christ. And they do not know us. They do not know us. That's what the text says. He says, now are we the sons of God. 
And they don't know Christ. And the reason why, and they don't know us. And the reason why they don't know us, because they don't know Christ. Because as Christ is in the world, so are we. You know, look at this analogy and similarity. Philip asked Jesus, show us the Father. Jesus said, Philip, you have, you have been with me so long. And asking me to show you the Father. He said, He who sees me sees the Father. Yeah. Not because he's the Father and he's the Son at the one time, like Jesus only people say. It's not so. It's because as Christ was in the world, so was God the Father. Christ was manifesting the Father. You know, this is a message for us as Christians. We play around with Christianity too much. Okay. We distort it too much. Jesus said in this text, verse 1 to 3, says, the reason why they don't know us is because they don't know Christ. If they don't know Christ, they don't know us. Because the same text says, as he is, so are we in the world. Authentic Christians are manifestations of Christ. That's why the people of Antioch had enough sense to call Christians Christians. That's where the word started. They were, they were prone to give nicknames to people in Antioch. And when they saw the life of the Christians there, Paul, Barnabas, and others, they labeled the followers of Christ. Christians. In the past, the church called itself the way. Uh -huh. The way is vague. What is the way? Yeah. It's vague. They call themselves the followers of the way. Uh -huh. But the people of Antioch call them the Christians. Mm -hmm. Make it more concrete and more knowable. You can identify the Christians as followers of Christ. Yes, it is far more obvious and plain for even the sinner man to understand. My Lord. So they don't know us. And this is why the secular man, the unsaved man, the man who is lost, cannot properly analyze a Christian. Don't let no sinner man analyze you. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 2 says, The man with the Spirit judges all things. He deserves all things. But he himself is deserved or judged by no man. No man means the man without the Spirit. We can, we can discern each other because we have the same Spirit. The man without the Spirit cannot understand a Christian because they don't understand God. Amen. They are not illuminated by the Spirit. So when we speak spiritual truth, Paul says the Greek intellectuals call it foolishness because the content of spiritual revelation transcended their natural intellect. They were academicians, like many of them today. Academicians, when they come to theology, they have no insight into the supernatural meaning that God has in these revelations in the Bible. You must understand who you are. Now are you the sons and daughters of God. Jesus would say you can't know if you are saved until Jesus comes. If you don't know until Jesus comes, you're not going to be saved because you have to be saved to go with Jesus when he comes. So they are lost forever. But we serve a God who we know now and we have a relationship with now and we have hope in now. And our future is anchored in the now. Yeah. What a hope. Yeah. But the hope that we have does something more. Yeah. The fourth point. 
Those who have this eternal hope don't live their delight. The text says, he that is born of God cannot practice sin. The word does not commit in the Greek. The word that is translated commit would be better translated practice because we all sin. And if any man say I don't sin, he's a liar. So, what it means is that he that is born of God, that he who is a child of God, now, does not practice sin. He did not say, he, as a matter of fact, he doesn't say he doesn't. He said cannot practice sin. It's an impossibility for the new life in the Christian frustrate the law of sin and death that cause people to practice it. The seed of God is the word of God, which is life. There's life in the world. The life of God is in the world. It is the seed of God. As a matter of fact, the Greek word for it is the sperm of God. Life travels through sperm, and the word of God is like sperm that carries the life that impregnates the soul of a person who believes. So when God's word enters your soul and faith joins it, the word is like the male sperm and faith is like the female egg. When they join together in the human soul, it produces a, a new being. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation, a new creature. All things are passed away. The old all things have become new. He's regenerated. He's born again. He has experienced the washing of new birth, says the Bible. A Christian is not a ordinary new man being. Let me tell you something. There are two races of people on planet Earth. The race that is attached to the first Adam. In Adam all died. First Corinthians chapter 15. Romans chapter 5, 12 to 21. In Adam, all die. So every man born of Adam, born spiritually dead. Yes, sir. In Christ shall all be made alive. The second human race is the last Adam. First Corinthians 15 called Christ the last Adam and the second man. So the race of the first Adam is the physical race. They belong to planet Earth. Their destiny is hell. They will not see heaven except they come out of the first Adam and get into this last Adam. If anybody is in Christ, is a new creature. So the new race begins at the new birth. Jesus says, except you're born again, you can't see the kingdom. You can't be a part of the new race, except you're born again. You become a part of the second, the last Adam, oh the second man. So the two races live together. The first race in Adam is hopeless, except it changes. So what happened? Jesus says there are two roles. The, the children are the race of the first Adam is on the broad road that leads to destruction. And many there be that follow it. Why? Why there are many? Because everyone was born on that road. Every man was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. When he was conceived in his mother's womb, he was born, he was conceived and born in the natural human race. The second race, which is the new creation people, is a new race. First Peter, Peter chapter 2 verse 9 sums it up well. Peter says, but you are a chosen generation. Yes. The word race yeah. is better than generation. Mm. You are a chosen race. Yeah. Mm. That is created 
by the new birth. You are a chosen generation. Let me say something to you more. You are not chosen. You were not chosen. When is it Jesus come into my heart? You were chosen before the world began. Wow. Yes. The Bible says in Peter and in Paul, Romans 8, 29, 1 Peter chapter 1, he says we were chosen and predestinated based on the full knowledge of God. Yeah. What all that includes, nobody knows. Theologians speculate and deduce, I don't know what all that means. But God for you us. Yes. As for as long as he existed. Yes. Eternally. He foresaw every one of us. He chose us. Yes. He caused us to be born again at a particular point. Each of us was born at different times. Into the body. Into the hope. But we were all forlorn and chosen collectively at the same time from all eternity. We were all collectively foreknown and chosen from eternity. Wow. But we came into the church at different times. Some just got saved. And some who are choose chosen, some who are chosen from eternity still have not come in yet. And some are not born physically yet. Wow. You see why this hope is so great? The hope is based on a decision God made from eternity. Wow. So, Psalm 103 and verse 17 says, From everlasting to everlasting, the loving kindness of the Lord is upon them that fear Him. And I want to emphasize the word fear now. I'm coming back to my point. The word fear is attached to a person. Those who are saved, those who have this hope, verse 2 of 1 John 3, he that has this hope purifies himself as he's pure. For without holiness, no man can see God. Without holiness, no man has hope. My Lord. Amen. What causes someone to purify himself? First, the seed of God abides in him. Yeah. What does the seed of God do to us? The seed of God in us causes us to fear God. He gives us the nature of God. He gives us, he gives us an appetite for holiness. He gives us a desire for righteousness. He gives us the power to do what we will. For the will of God to fulfill in our lives. So when we fear God, we shun evil. The beginning of fear of God. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. He who fears God is wise. He who lives a holy life is wise. He who lives in sin and chase after sin from God's perspective is a fool. It doesn't matter what degree you have behind your name. No matter if you have 10 PhD behind your name in 10 different fields. If you don't follow righteousness, if you pursue sin, God describes such a person as a fool. Amen. The wise man shuns evil. The wise man Pursues righteousness. The wise man is holy. Because the seed of God, the sperm of God, the word which is the word of God, abides in the heart and the mind of the person who has hope in God. Don't let people fool you to pursue evil. Some people pollute their life in search of riches, in search of fame, in search of, search of acceptance from people. The wise man will stand alone when he has to stand alone for God. Amen. The wise man will not sacrifice hope for despair. No, it will not happen. 
So those who have eternal hope live a life of holiness, a life of righteousness. They are not hypocrites. They are people who have some foolish ideas of holiness, live like the devil in the week and come to church on Sunday. I remember one woman called me some years ago, more than 20 years for counseling. She was a worship leader in a Pentecostal church. But she was just living at home with a married man. But she was a worship leader. She confessed to me, what I do, I make sure that Saturday night I don't do anything. How can people be so foolish? I make sure I don't do anything with the married man. She can't do it from Monday up until Friday. Saturday she must abstain. I go to church and eat worship on Sunday. Go back to it on Monday for the rest of it. God says what a man sows that shall he also reap. If you sow corruption, you're going to reap corruption. You can't fool people. Some people laugh at pastor, pastor Andrew. Oh, the pastor is blind. The boy is blind. Don't know what I'm doing. What, what associate pastor told me some years ago, all the members of the church and the leaders are blind because while he was associate pastor, he was living a life of fornication, but they didn't know. Listen, they can laugh at pastors and laugh at church board and laugh at the church as much as they can. That is the behavior of a fool. That's right. Put it simple as that. That's it. There's no other pretty way to put it up. That is the perception of a fool. Because the God of the universe, who knows all things, are watching the sinful hypocrite who come into church, pretend to be saved, pretend to be holy, and laugh at pastor, laugh at church member, they don't know what's going on. Laugh at God. And tell God that he doesn't know what's going on. Laugh at God. The cities are the kind of foolishness that happen in religion. These are the kind of nonsense that people say and do, but God says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. For wisdom leads you on a path of righteousness and holiness and justice and goodness. That's true wisdom. Not just mere intellectual wisdom and being smart. But a wisdom that is aligned to the mind of God. That's what it is. So I'm challenging you today. To manifest your hope in the living of a holy life, a pure life, a life that reverence God. You come to church and pretend to be saved and holy, and live like a demon at home, and at work, at school, and at the sport field. One pastor. He became a famous pastor. I read his book. He said, when he was young, he a Christian. When he goes to play basketball, the way he played and beat him on the field, nobody could know that he was saved. He was a disgrace to the name of God. But he came to his senses that he could live a life that testified to the holiness of God. When you love God, when you have hope in God, when you have faith in God, when you have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God, you live a holy, righteous life. Yes, Lord. And to live a holy, righteous life is to follow the moral and spiritual teachings of the Bible. Not something you make up. People tell you it doesn't matter which God you serve as long as you are sincere. Criminals are sincere in killing people and to take their money and 
the rape and do all kind of something. Their sincerity doesn't make their action good. Yeah. And the power they're pursuing right. Sincerity must be a love, hope, and faith, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God. So you come to church, friends. Church is not a club where people come to enjoy just fellowship. We enjoy fellowship, but not as a club, people, but as the body of Christ united in one Christ. But well, here is the next thing. You live a holy life here on earth, but that's not all. That's not in it. What we are is not what we will be. Look at yourself. You see, people look at us, they say, some of us look ugly. Some of us cook it, you know. We have bounty foot, we have cooking hands, we have all kind of something, big eyes, big nose, all kind of something, past us. But what we are now is not what we're going to be. <laughs> Paul said, John says in chapter 3, verse 2, Now are we the sons of God, but what we shall be has not yet been appeared. But one thing we know for certain. One thing we have to hope in. We shall be like him perfectly. Why? Because we shall see him. As he is. Spiritual transformation on earth. Christian faith, there are two levels of Christian faith. A faith that is based on hearing. And Job demonstrated in chapter 42, verse 5, somewhere there he says, I heard of you with the hearing of my ears. And God said about Job in chapter 1 and 2, that Job was a righteous, perfect man, meaning that he conformed to the knowledge he had. But when Job was tried and he came to the end of his suffering, he says, I have heard of you of by the hearing of my ears, but now my eyes see thee, and I repent in dust and ashes. We are Christians by hearing the word. Fear comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Yes. But transformation comes from revelation knowledge. Hearing the word produces faith. But seeing the glory of God revealed to the word brings transformation. So it says, we all with open faces, beholding us in a glass, the glory of God are changed into that same image. The image that we see in Revelation. We change into that image. It's a mystic, spiritual revelation knowledge that goes beyond academia, mm. academic knowledge. Mm. A spiritual insight. As Paul prayed for in Ephesians 1, verse 18 to 24. Okay. Paul prayed for spiritual insight into God. It's not enough to hear the word. You need to see what the word is saying. Yes, yes, yes. You need revelation that shows you the image of God. Yes. That you're going to change you to. For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. You can only conform to the image of Christ by the revelation you have of Christ. When you see, you don't have to do anything to change. The power in the revelation changes. When fire hits you, you don't have to do anything to be burned. The fire burns you. When you see God, you're changing to God by the power that is inherent in the revelation. My Lord. 
If you're not changing, you're not seeing. God wants us to begin to see the hope that we have. Christ is our hope. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Christ wants you to behold him so that you can change into him who is the hope of glory. For whom if predestined, he called, he called, he justified. We justify, he glorifies. There are different dimensions of glorification. We begin the glorification process at the new birth. And it will end, it will culminate when Jesus Christ returns to transform the living saints and to resurrect and transform the dead saints. What a hope. Is a hope that makes us not ashamed. Yes, sir. It's a hope that no man can take away. Wow. Because if they kill us, we get to the hope sooner. Oh oh for to be absent from the body is, is to be present with God. Yes. So killing the Christian, send them into the realm of the heavenly hope faster. Oh, God. How many of you today? How many of you are experiencing this hope in your life? When you look at what is happening around you, how many of you have hope in this life? How many of you are getting revelation of the hope that is in Jesus? I'm saying to you today, it's a time to go higher. The Bible says we go from faith to faith and glory to to glory. How many of you today are not saved? How many persons inside are not saved? You have not been on the journey yet. God wants to change. How many of you are on your journey? How many revelations are you getting? How much are you transforming from glory to glory? Is the question. Christianity is not static. Is one that must change from one level of glory to the next. To the next. My Lord, exactly. how long have you been stuck where you are? How long? Too long. God wants us to embrace this hope in Christ Jesus. He wants us to cling to that hope in Christ Jesus. He wants us to look beyond this fleeting passing world and see the eternal hope that transcends this world. If you're here today, you're not a Christian, I would like you to stand. I want to pray a prayer for you. If you're in the church, you're not a Christian. You're like to be saved. I want you to stand. Thank God for this sister. You came this morning to have this hope. First lady, part of this time you are in here. I want you to understand my sister. Anybody else who are here today? Those who are alive. Christianity is simple to start. It's a matter of have believing in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. To believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior is to, willing, to be willing to give him your life. Yeah. So Lord, take my life. And let come into my heart and change me. When you believe God enters into your life and change you, you will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Because you become a new creature. He changed your spirit from a dead spirit spiritually to a living spirit. For Christ is the life giver. The first Adam was of the hurt earthly. The second man, the last Adam, is a life giving spirit. I'm going to pray for you right now. Then, first lady, we must share with you more about the gospel. Lord, I pray for this young lady right now. Thank you for willingness to stand. Hallelujah. The two of you are standing? Are you saying? You're not afraid? Okay. 
Lord, I pray that you touch her right now. I pray now that this soul of the spirit, the word of God will penetrate her spirit, penetrate her mind, transform her into a new creation, a new creature in Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, lay hold on her now. Not only change her, but baptize her with power from her. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you believe, I declare you saved in the name of Jesus. And there's no turning back. For the seed of God enters into the person who's born again. We will not practice sin. My sheep will hear my voice and follow me. I give unto them eternal life. And they will never perish. Neither can any man, nor demon, nor Satan, nor himself pluck. They're out of the hand of God. They are safe and safe. In the name of Jesus. God, I bless her now with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. She's changed. In Jesus' name. If you are born again, you have to take her and to her. If you're born again, I feel today that God wants to give you a fresh touch. Just come and stand at the altar like the cross. If you need a fresh touch from God to take you to the middle of it, just come and stand across the altar. Oh, Rabbi, my shadow, you see. Oh, Rabbi, you see here, Rabbi, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. As you stand at the altar, now set your heart on God. Set your heart on God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I just feel this, this afternoon. I want you to pray for each other. Grab somebody's hand. You pray for them and they pray for you. Three persons can do it. If we don't have equal. You are going to be the minister this morning. After this, I'm going to pray for the entire congregation. And pray for you who are standing at the altar. Lay a hold on somebody right now. And pray for the person that you're holding on to. Pray for a refreshing anointing. You see, the herd doesn't get one show of rain and stay dry and stay wet. The herd must constantly be watered. Hold on, hold his hand. Pray for him as he prayed for you. Pray for a, a new shower. Pray for showers of blessing for the person who you are holding on to. You might be holding on to two persons. Pray for one first and then pray for the other. Holy Spirit, if you are home and you have somebody close to you, hold on to the hand of somebody. Pray for each other. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Today is a new day. I declare a new day. Today is a new beginning. A new level. A new level today. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water today. Jesus says, those who believe, out of their bellies. Magabushi be kalabo tose kelia samana kosia. Rebi oma si kuru shikilia ba. Lebe doma, lebe domo si kelia ba kasi oma da. Shioma sala. The soul of the world is not penetrating your spirit. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water as a sword and the spirit of the word of God anointed by the spirit. Penetrate your spirit. 
in the name of Jesus. The river head is let loose in you right now. God, in the name of Jesus, I release in the belly of these people the rivers of living water. Flow out now in the name of Jesus. Flow out of your belly. Each one of you right now, feel the fire burning in your bellies right now. Out of your belly is flowing rivers. Open your mouth and begin to praise God. Praise God for the river. Thank God for the river that is flowing inside of you right now. Lama Rushi Kilia Barasia Limio Marasia Shabu Rusha Lobo Masiki no Moko Tilio Masala Mabulia Jesus Explosion in the right now Explosion in the bellies right now Keo Masakala Marusia Heal be the spirit right now those who are bitter in spirit, those who are unforgiven, release them from Lord God and forgiveness, from bad spirit, bad minds, covetousness, loss. God, release them right now in the name of Jesus. Lying spirit, fornication, adultery, unkindness, ill Radio Matakasilo Maranda. Dryness in their spirit. Remove dryness with the rivers of living water in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the fire burn today. Let the fire burn. Lord, let the fire burn in their hearts right now. Holy Spirit, fire burn in their hearts now. Burn, Holy Spirit. Lord, let unbelief leave their hearts right now. Let doubts and hopelessness that disappear, disappear. Bless marriages. Bless children. Bless businesses. Bless workplaces. Bless your health, your body, mind, and spirit, emotion, your will, your desire. Heal them in the name of Jesus. Let loose, oh Holy Spirit. Let loose, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, let loose. Let loose Holy Spirit upon this congregation at the altar today. Let loose the doors on social media. Let loose in the name of Jesus. Something fresh, something different, something new in your experience today. You can't go back to where you came. Something new inside of your spirit. Revolutionary faith. Fall, O oh God, upon them right now. Fall upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Deliverance. Those who need deliverance, I deliver you now in the name of Jesus. Those who need a breakthrough, I set you free in the name of Jesus. I set the church free. Lord, let people come in from the east, west, north, south, in the name of Jesus. I declare a church building, Lord, paid off for the church in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth at the height and ideal location where thousands will flow in in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, radio lama seke tomasala. Shake off your burdens. Burdens fall off your people right now, God. 
Let burden fall off. Marital burdens, financial burden, sickness burdens, spiritual burdens, all kinds of burdens fall off now in the name of Jesus. Chains are broken. Bondages are gone. Curses are gone in the name of Jesus. Demonic oppressions are destroyed and nullified in the name of Jesus. Spiritual transformation in the name of Jesus. Let God arise today in the hearts of you at the altar. Let God arise. Let him arise. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the cosmic ruler of the universe. He holds everything that exists. Everything that was created is owned by the cosmic Christ. And he wants to change every human being into his likeness. Come, let us create man in our own image. God's ultimate plan for man is to be a finite version of himself. Jesus, he has made us finite gods. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whatever you need, you're standing at the altar today. Whatever you need, confess that you have it. In the name of Jesus, God is releasing to you today what you ask for. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened. Seek and you shall find as you stand on the altar, as you are lying at home on social media. Release your faith for whatever you desire in God according to his will. Release it now. In the name of Jesus. Sick mind, sick body, sick will, sick soul, sick. Whatever sickness, social sickness, they are corrected, they are healed. I declare that this church is a flowing river in which people will swim. People will walk like Isaiah, like Ezekiel 47. They shall go into, into the river at the knee, at the, the hunger level, then knee level, then waist level, then swimming level. In the name of Jesus, swim in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Swim. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, glory to God, let God arise, let all your enemies be scattered, let God take charge right now, raise your voice and give God thanks for the answer, Jesus, 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 what you ask for in the name of Jesus according to you is what you have received. Jesus. Leave the altar with the assurance that God has granted you. Your request, Pastor Amos. God bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you, we bless you.
Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory. Holy Ghost. A fresh anointing. Fresh oil. A fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Gosh, it goes. The river of God. Hallelujah. God, the river of Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Hallelujah. Oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Certainly the presence of God. Hallelujah. The power of God. The manifestation of the Spirit of God. I want to do something fresh in this house. Amen. Hallelujah, flow oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Continue to consecrate ourselves as we go through the week. Monday we meet here. Wednesday we meet here as we conclude this week in prayer and consecration. Amen. As we continue. To see the face of the Lord. Amen. Um, on the 3rd, February 3rd, the youth is inviting everyone to come and participate in their service, Fruits of the Spirit. This is their theme. They're employing us, you are to take your favorite fruit, also pick a fruit of the Spirit to reflect on, on the 3rd of February. As they continue to plug in, young people are coming to want us to join with them to support your service on February 3rd, Friday. Amen. Everyone stand on your feet as we are dismissed. Thank God for the power of God that is in this house. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the man of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. A fresh touch. That's what we need. Be a fresh oil, a fresh anointing. Yesterday's manna is not good enough for today's. Hallelujah. Bible, amen. Praise God. We need fresh oil. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your people, oh God. We pray, Holy Ghost. To continue, as the Bible says, as the deer panted after the water brooks, so our soul longs after you. Lord Jesus, we pray that the hunger and the thirst may come alive in our soul as we continue to yearn for more of you. Even as we have set aside these first 21 days in prayer and in consecration, some fasting, Lord Jesus, we turn our plates down to seek more of you. Holy Spirit, meet us in a fresh and a new way, even as we're entering into a new year. Holy Ghost, we want a new touch, a new anointing. Oh God, we thank you. Thank you for your word that has gone forth, even the sperm of your word that has gone in our souls. We pray that faith will come alive. We pray that transformation will start to take place. Oh God, by the power of God as we you reveal yourself through your word. Father, all our steps in your word, we pray. So we can find that revelation that comes from your word, we pray. Father, as we are about to go today, we pray that you may dismiss us with your peace. Cover us as we travel on the road. As we go through this week to our various places of jobs or schools or whatever, wherever we find ourselves, doing, occupying till you come. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you may anoint us afresh, lead us and direct us until we meet again in this place. In Jesus' name I pray. Someone say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Minister to someone you dismiss, honor the presence of God. Praise God.